Hello and welcome back to Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. My name is WWE Deadman, but you already know that. Can I get somebody here right away on the double? Yeah, uh, Cookie. Names. Thanks. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, everybody. Uh, Nate, I need a soundtrack for you. Hello, I'm a little teapot, short and... Hello, people. How you doing? My name's Cookie. Welcome to our show here. How many people are going to be playing the game? So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie. Please. Sorry, just type your name in, okay? No. Can you get me one of them? At least not just one of them. He's locked in. Hey, we're going on the air here. Give me a name. No. Number three. Keep on. Okay, you need a name. And when I think of you, the first thing that comes up is uh, vomit. Fuck you too, Cookie. Another thing. Are you looking for a seven-question tournament game, or more like a full twenty-one question? Gotcha. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betty bakes me bread. That's T over for you. One. Half the speed? Yeah. Try the half the speed. One, two, okay, just, all right, hang on. I need a PA here right now okay, on the double. <laughs> 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds. Pay attention here and don't screw it up. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you got to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? 10 seconds. Hey, good luck. Get rid of the desktop, please. Now get rid of the desktop. Okay. Set to red. Go to black. Okay, everybody set. Hold tight. Holy startup drive. I think I'm cured. I'm telling you, with Cyberlicious Fruit Snacks, you can turn screensavers into lifesavers. Yeah. Playing solo for this show? All right, let's do it. Good. How about it? I gotta Who's say, it's category? great to be back to recording after one week of Gamescom. Uh, you probably saw the recap video. What's wrong? Did your fingers add? Yeah, I'm just gonna. Now I'm just gonna let you choose the question because the category I got is some other stuff to talk dust. about. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Hope you're ready, because anyway. here's one coming at you. In the cremation business, what term is used to describe what is left of a body after it's been incinerated? Cremains, oven scraps, remnants, or bone meal? Uh... Wow, that was a bad guess. And here's the right answer. Cremains, as in cremated remains. Try both flavors, regular cremains and barbecue. Okay, pick a category. Um. The name in this category is Great Balls of Fire. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. A white dwarf is a star that is always found in groups of seven, abnormally <laughs> faint for its high density, composed entirely of burning helium, or located in the constellation Tattoo. Um, a white dwarf. I'm going to go with... It's all yours. Abnormally faint because it's near gravitational collapse. And you know what? When you're a few billion years old, you're pretty tired. You're ready to collapse. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Question three. This one's going to be Don't follow yodel. the bouncing spheroids. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Oh, no. Someone's drowning. Luckily, those Baywatch scales are superb mathematicians. Which geometric shape will they probably use to save the day? A torus, parabola, icosahedron, or hyperbole? What? Go for it. I think... Actually, a parabola is a conic geometric curve, not unlike those you'll find on the Baywatch lifeguards. And let's I have no it. idea? What a the fuck is a torus? Like a donut or a life preserver. And they'll throw one out just as soon as they're done running in slow motion. 
Never heard of that. The category behind this question is My karma ran over my dogma. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. You ever feel like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't? I know I do. What's that called? Double Jeopardy, Catch 22, Kismet, or Murphy's Law? Uh... Kismet. No, that's fate. It's also an old musical my mother just loved. Yeah, let's get all the wrong answers today. This. Catch 22. Why? Okay, pick a category. How about you explain shit to me? Uh. Oh, go fuck yourself! This gibberish questions category is hair transplants and sports arenas. Open uh. value on this gibberish question: five thousand bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. You ready? What snappy comeback does this rhyme with? Click and fit hair, a fun won't line. Uh. Hint one: it's often said out of anger. See what you got, sir, sir. Stick it where the sun don't shine. Uh. Careful, if you stick it too far, you'll need a proctologist to find it again. Yeah. And you can stick that kind of question right, where the sun don't shine. We need a category. Um. Number six, it's number six, it's the category sassy waitresses. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Hang on tight, because here we go. When Flo on TV's Alice tells you to kiss my grits, what is she literally asking you to kiss? Cornmeal, baba beans, human intestines, or peanuts? I don't have a fucking Here's idea. what you should have guessed. Flo wants you to kiss her cornmeal. Yeah? Well, she can kiss my corn cob. How about uh. Next up, nice finger. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. In the James Bond movie Goldfinger, what was Goldfinger's full name? Aura Goldfinger, Sir Raul Goldfinger, Midas Goldfinger, or Dr. Myron Goldfinger, DDS? Oh, I'm not a Cham James Bond fan, so I wouldn't know Should've that. Should've this. Auric, it means gold. Yeah. Gold, Goldfinger. Kinda has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Wow! Alright, come on, hit me. We need a bad category. pun. Really bad pun. Uh. Wow! Right, right, that thing's elevate, like elevate, my score. That's also the category. Dead. dead things. And this one's gonna be worth three thousand dollars. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of the following Jurassic Park dwellers is the only dinosaur that actually existed in the Jurassic period? Hadrosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, or Tyrannosaurus Rex? I knew that a T-Rex definitely didn't. Um, I'm gonna go with the Stego. Stegosaurus, the cockroach of dinosaurs. It lasted through several periods of the Mesozoic era. Okay, pick a category. Um. Whoa, what's your sign? It's number nine. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Soft drinks and drug culture. The amount on the table is three grand. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Coca-Cola is to cocaine as blank is to blank. Mountain Dew is to LSD. Dr. Pepper is to heroin. 7-Up is to lithium. Or Pepsi is to crack. 
I'm going to go with Pepsi to crack. Go for it. No more wise cracks out of you. I don't know what you're going for. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. 7-Up is the lithium. Why? Many sources say that Coke once had coca leaves in it and 7-Up once had lithium. But don't rush out to the store. They don't anymore. Um, wait. Coca-Cola did not once have coke, uh, co coca leaves in it. It still has coca leaf extract in it. It just doesn't have the cocaine. Uh, and I never heard about 7-Up slash Sprite ever having any kind of drug in it uh i only once heard something about them uh, uh about sprite having lead in it but that wasn't a thing and yeah but yeah screw that how about it hit me with the category um This one's gonna be the Geeky Tower of Babel. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Imagine your friend sends you email about a computer virus that's been programmed to specifically seek out people with your first name. Which widely recognized symbol at the end of the email reveals your friend is only kidding? The exclamation mark, the colon, and the close paren, the colon squiggly right bracket, and open paren, or the colon... Are you question. really fucking asking for a smiley face? A colon and a close parenthesis make a little sideways smile. Used by people who spend too much time at their computer, but at least they're friendly. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round. Uh, I really gotta say this real quick. You really see the age in this game. As it's re it was released back in the 90s. Because, <laughs> you know, smiley faces are kind of... Outdated. Round one, so pay attention and let's do it. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Um. Also, no one actually uses smiley faces. Hey, I, I got things to do. To friend. say just joking anymore. The name in this category is the Big Purple Pig Out. It's gonna be worth four thousand dollars. Now imagine you belong to the Barney the Dinosaur Hate Club and are currently designing a large skewer on which to roast Barney. Now let's say you know the radius of Barney is three feet. In order to penetrate his belly and emerge from the other side, the skewer will have to be a little longer than three and a half feet, six feet, nine feet, or twelve feet. The radius is three feet. Then six feet. Six feet. The radius is half the distance through Barney. Yeah, half the diameter. Oh, and I will personally volunteer to skewer that reptile. <laughs> How about it? Hit me with the category. Um. Uh oh, mess butt tit slime chore. I Once hate again, you. It's time for a ticklish past <laughs> Here's your gibberish category. Music groups and weaponry. The opening value for this gibberish question is gonna be 10,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. All right, now don't let the punctuation throw you. What famous quote does this rhyme with? Geek Mopley Band, Sherry the Rig Chick? It was said by a former president. It was said by a president who liked to speak in hushed tones. And if he's hanging out with some rig chick, that's probably a good idea. Last tint, it involves a blunt object. And not to sound blunt, but it's time to wrap it up. None of this tells me anything. Teddy Roosevelt's advice to the well-endowed. Geek Moffley, Ben Sherry the rig chick. Of course, I find that people with big sticks have a little trouble keeping quiet about it, if you know what I'm saying. Never heard that. Okay, pick a category. Hmm.
The category is the Bible and upward mobility. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. If the following biblical books worked for the King James Bible Corporation, which one would have the privilege of using the executive washroom based on seniority of age? The Gospel according to Matthew, the Gospel according to Luke, the Book of Leviticus, or the Book of Revelation? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Leviticus. I have no idea. You got it. Leviticus is the only one from the Old Testament. I thought so. Uh, good morning, Leviticus. How you doing, Deuteronomy? All right, come on, hit me. We need Not category. that I would care, but still. Yeah, sorry about that, but I got to get out of here. The category behind this question is, I wonder if he has a pouch. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. If there were a coup staged on the set of Captain Kangaroo, elevating Mr. Green Jeans one rank above the old captain, what would this new leader be called? What? First Lieutenant Green Jeans, Private Green Jeans, Major Green Jeans, or Colonel Green Jeans? Ugh. I have no fucking idea. In case you're curious about the correct answer, <laughs> Major Green Jeans. How about it? Hit me with the category. I am not at all familiar with American military ranking. Uh, or our mi it. military like ranking, one. to be perfectly uh -oh. honest. Test not slick crime store. <laughs> And if you give me another gibberish question after this, then I'm going to go and kill somebody. Ah! Well, here's your category for this gibberish question. Supper time at the Smiths. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Okay, with what 70s catchphrase does this rhyme? 70s. Sup more toes, Smith, the clubber, chose. Don't let the punctuation throw you off. First hint, it's from a TV show. From the 70s, which means I never saw that. It's a TV show about a teacher. Which doesn't tell me anything. Hmm, that reminds me of a story about my Uncle Sidney. He's a teacher. Last hint, it's a creative use for a hose. No fucking idea. Well, you blew it, Horshack. Sub more toast, Smith the Clubber chose. What? If you think about that literally, it gives you kind of a headache. What? Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. Okay. <sighs> I know dead people who move faster than you. Question number 16. And I like it too. The category. The Mayberry Gang in the Middle Ages. Hello, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Now, if the folks from Mayberry found themselves back in the Middle Ages, which character would be expected to take up bloodletting as an additional part of his business? Otis Campbell, Andy Taylor, Floyd Lawson, or Goober Pyle? And I have no fucking idea who that even is. I know what bloodletting is, but the without the... Is... Floyd! He was the barber, and barbers did the bloodletting back in the Middle Ages. Uh, okay. The barber still does it, by accident, when he's inhaled too much talc. Okay, pick a category. Here's the category. Dodgeball in the 19th century. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. In dodgeball, an opposing player is out when you hit him or her with the ball. Up until 1845, in which of these games were you allowed to eliminate an opposing player by hitting him with a ball? Bowling, football, baseball, or squash? Uh, uh, what? That's right, you could bean the runner and he'd be out. Personally, I think that's a rule that should be brought back to baseball. It would definitely liven up the game. <laughs> How about it? Hit me with a category. Song to 
Next up, musical terms and idiosyncrasies. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Fortissimo is the loud mouth as retardando is the blank. Bamboo shoot, slow poke, penny pincher, or motor mouth? Retardando. <sighs> It's all Wait. yours. Um, I think retardando is slow. Retardando means slow down in music. Good. Actually, I think the PC term composers are now using for retardando is uh, mentally challenged ando. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Don't do that when I'm drinking, you are. Uh, time is money, Jack. <gasps> oh, God. Uh, uh, so what are we doing here? All natural fabrics that didn't catch on. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. <laughs> Mentally you challenged. You were back in the days of the Renaissance, and you wore a cod piece made of cod. Which of these best describes what you'd be wearing? A jacket made of fire ants, a supporter made of fish, a stocky made of lard, or a hat made of cat? Uh... A supporter made of fish. Cod is an old term for scrotum. And I'll tell you something. The way the locker room smelled in school, I think several of the fellas had cod cod pieces. How about yeah. it? Hit me with a category. The category behind this question is, if they could see me now, they'd be squid. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Imagine that Kathy Lee Gifford, spokeswoman for Carnival Cruise Lines, wants to try out a new cruise line. What itinerary could she expect for a voyage on Wagner's The Flying Dutchman? Sailing to Denmark by way of Holland, sailing forever until she's freed by love, going on an ill-fated three-hour tour, or going straight to hell? Uh, I hope I'm right with this. She could be sailing for a very long time. Good. The captain of the Flying Dutchman was doomed to sail endlessly until he was redeemed by the love of a woman. Could Kathy Lee be that woman? Okay. Okay, pick a category. Um, I'm gonna go with that. Jack attacking coming. And yeah, I already Jack know. Attack. Oh, you already got the rules down, huh? Let's not waste time. Match on this. Tools of the trade. Get those synapses fired up and those fingers popping. Begin the attack. Violin. Bow. Oh, yeah, that would work. Yeah. Can I have that again? Guitarist. Don't actually know. Um, what do you call that thing? Okay. What? Let's get the bow out of here. And I I think I'm not completely wrong yet. And I'm just gonna guess on this one, but I think Yeah. Good. Nice going. I 
think you found your niche. Not the worthless trivia is going to help you find a decent job or anything, but who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know. You don't know Jack. Good. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, Cookie, what's the plan here with the contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? And, uh, we'll let you know next week. Well, turn the crown upside down. Have one of these. What is it? It's a package of Cyberlicious Fruit Snacks. It has all the computer equipment you'll ever need shrunken into bite-sized fruit goodness. Go ahead, try one. Well, all right, if you say so. Wow, that's incredible. I just had a fruity modem, and I feel like I have 28,000 bod taste buds. Hey, that's nothing. Try the fruity system folder. Holy startup drive. I think I'm cured. I'm telling you, with Cyberlicious Fruit Snacks, you can turn screen savers into life savers. Oh, uh, we're okay. everywhere. You'd like to approach them, talk to them. And anyway, them I'll see you next week. Till then, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe Hello, for more. And, and until next time, I'm WWE Dadman. Bye. Women, and I'd like